Hello, I'm Lakeisha Bennett, and you're listening to the Medivans podcast series. In this podcast, we're speaking with Sarah Bodeman, CEO and founder of Hippotrek. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. No worries. How are you today, Lakeisha? I'm good. How are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, so first of all, can you just tell us about Hippotrek? Um, tell us about the company and what led you to develop it. Yeah, so Hippotrek is a cloud-based solution that guides organizations through creating, implementing, and managing a customized HIPAA compliance program. Um, I founded it actually because I have about a decade of experience in healthcare administration, um, and what I discovered through that decade was that nobody was really um, offering anything to help me as an administrator manage my HIPAA compliance in a way that made sense in my practice. So I started Hippotrek to kind of solve the problem that I had as an administrator. Awesome. So um, your company um, basically targets uh, treatment providers, or who does your company, uh, who is it geared towards? Yeah, so we actually have a variety of different um, clients from treatment providers to clinics. Um, we have some large, we have a large system using our software, as mm -hmm. well as vendors um, and business associates such as marketing firms and we have a couple of billing companies and IT companies using our software as well. Awesome. Now um, next year in February you're going to have uh, be speaking on a webinar webinar and it's entitled Trust Me You Need a HIPAA Compliance Program. Can you tell us um, what attendees can expect from this webinar? Um, yes. So, so many organizations believe that they um, don't really need HIPAA compliance because they think they're too small um, for the government to go after them. So the purpose is to kind of um, show organizations why they need it. And it's really focused on um, how healthcare is being hacked. Mm -hmm. So in the webinar, we're going to go over ways that um, really sophisticated hackers have been able to go in and get healthcare information and why they why the hackers are targeting the healthcare industry in like, particular. Mm -hmm. um, they're also going to get some really good insight onto how to conduct a risk analysis and manage all of their risks through a risk management program. So we have a lot packed into that hour. Awesome. Now, um, you're mentioning, I guess, um, some treatment providers feel that they're smaller, that the government is not going to come after them. Um, I guess without having a compliance program, um, treatment providers, they can get hit with substantial fines. Can you just tell us about fines and penalties? Yes. So you organizations can actually be fined up to $1.5 million per year for um, HIPAA breaches. To date, the largest fine has been $4.68 million. That was for a, a larger system. It was a hospital. But mm -hmm. smaller providers are being fined hundreds of thousands of dollars when a breach occurs. Mm -hmm. And it's not if you're going to experience a breach, but rather when you're going to experience a breach. And what types of safeguards do you have in place to help mitigate your risks? So that's kind of where we shine and help organizations through is because we help them put their policies in place and we help them task them out and follow all the document all the steps that they've taken so that they can actually help mitigate those risks because those fines are large enough to put some organizations out of business. What would be an example of a breach? So last December, the Alaska um, Department of or the last the Anchorage Community Mental Health Services rather up in Alaska was experience, experienced a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar breach for mm -hmm. failure to conduct a risk analysis and manage their basic risks. So they actually experienced a breach because their one of their laptops was stolen out of a employee's vehicle, mm -hmm. um, and that laptop was was unencrypted, which wow. led to the investigation, which led to the OCR, the Office of Civil Rights that oversees HIPAA, to discover that the Anchorage um, Community Mental Health Services actually had not done their risk assessments. Yeah, um, so you mentioned, I guess, um, you help facilities and um, the companies that you work with with safeguards. What would be, I guess, some safeguards to kind of um, prevent um, a company having a breach or a case of noncompliance? Yeah, so if we take, for example, what happened up in Alaska um, in Anchorage, then so they didn't encrypt their laptops. So we helped them to create a policy for encryption 
and then task out the responsibility for it to be encrypted, for those laptops to be encrypted, mm -hmm. and then the person actually has to um, document inside of our software what steps they took to encrypt, including the level of encryption security that they've used. Um, what they got dinged for was not conducting a risk analysis. So again, we can help them create a policy for risk analysis, and then every procedure in that policy can be tasked out to differing people in the organization depending upon who is responsible for each task. And then we actually help them to track how well they've done that through our risk assessment. So everything that um, Anchorage was hit for, they could have actually done that inside of our system mm -hmm. and then their fine could have potentially been a lot less. Now you mentioned um, you work with treatment providers, you um, you work with some hospitals as well or some larger organizations. Are, well, behavioral health care treatment providers aren't the only organizations that require uh, compliance programs. I guess can you tell us about um, some other organizations that would need um, HIPAA compliance? Yeah, so um, HIPAA lays out two types of organizations that have to be compliant with HIPAA. Mm -hmm. One is a covered entity, which treatment facilities, um, hospitals, insurance companies, clearing houses, clinics, those are all covered entities. Then we also have business associates. Now business associates are vendors that will have access to your protected health information or patient information. Mm -hmm. um, and those can be like billing companies like Medivance. Mm -hmm. um, it could also be your marketing companies that have access to PHI, um, your IT provider, if you have an outside IT provider that helps you with stuff, any type of consultant. Even attorneys and accountants can be considered um, business associates if they see patient information. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to mention about HIPAA Trek and what you guys do and possibly your goals for the future? Um, we have a lot planned for the future. Uh, so we're only about a year old. We were founded last May, so we're a year and a half old. Our goal is just to keep growing. We're already in about 100 organizations, and we want to just keep growing. Um, our goal is to make compliance simple so um, and to help educate organizations so that they know that compliance isn't a destination, it's a journey, mm -hmm. which is why we are called HIPAA Trek, because a trek is a long and arduous journey. But at HIPAA Trek, we make it simple. Um, it's not a, a destination, it's a journey. I guess, how long does I guess it typically take for a company to kind of get... Um... Again, that's a tricky question to ask. So um, that depends. So most organizations can create all of their policies and procedures in just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like a one and done type of thing. Once you have all those policies in place, you actually have to be implementing those and that is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. For example, like you have to conduct your risk analysis periodically, like at least once a year. You have to change your passwords at least every 90 days. Yeah. You have to do login monitoring ongoing, like that's a continuous activity that has to be done. Um, you have to review your policies and procedures at least once a year. So that's kind of like the journey that we go on. And your your policies should change as you adopt your as your organization becomes more technically sophisticated, as you bring on new staff, um, if you move offices or you move um, software providers, um, then your policies should change because your procedures are going to change. That's what we mean by it's a journey. It's not a one and done. There's no checkbox to check and say, I'm HIPAA compliant now. Um, so if anyone wants to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with um, HIPAA Trek and they want to learn more and get, um, get on board? Yeah, so they can email us at HIPAA Pro, that's H-I-P-A-A-P-R-O, at HIPAA Trek, H-I-P-A-A-T-R-E-K dot com, or they can give us a ring at 314-272-2600, um, or they can visit us on the web at HIPAA Trek dot com. Awesome. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. Thank you so much, Lakeisha. I appreciate it. No problem. And here's a little more information on that webinar. Trust me, you need a compliance program. Now, it takes place on February 11th, 2016 at 1 p.m. Eastern. Now, if you want to register, you just have to go to medevancebilling.com forward slash webinar. Again, if you want to register, that website is medevancebilling.com forward slash webinar.
And we want to thank you for listening to the MetaVance podcast series, brought to you by MetaVance Billing Service, the leader in revenue cycle management for behavioral health care providers and toxicology services nationwide, with more than 140 employees and averaging more than $60 million of transmitted claims monthly, MetaVance Billing Service has the manpower, technology, and expertise to increase your facility's revenue. To learn more about MetaVance, just go to MetaVanceBilling.com or call toll-free at 1-888-407-9920.